Milifix. Anything with fix is not the ideal medication for any kind of fish. I wouldn't use it. Uh, and a part of this video, I'll give you the information needed for actual medication. But a big thing is with any medication, I would do research on the sickness of your pet fish first before going out and buying anything. Uh, search forums like, for example, betafishforums.com uh, or betafish dot com tropicalfishkeeping.com they've got some good information on there hosing for the co2 canister filter uh, I would go with 8 feet would be good 25 feet is also good another thing is with the co2 canister I would get a check valve to go along with it to keep water from going in back into the uh, CO2 canister that you made. Uh, it'll have one way flow. You can get all this at Walmart. It's only like two bucks, less than two bucks. And then. An aquarium airstone too to help distribute the co2 when it is released now it won't bubble a lot but it will make bubbles here and there I would have the bottle sitting up higher than the um, aquarium itself some good medication that I would use would be like the API general cure um, it's good for gill and skin flukes, wasting disease, hole in the head, and swollen abdomen. There's also this product from API, the TC Tetracycline. And as you can see right here in the video, what it actually treats for, this is the number one thing that I use. Let's see if I get to zoom in better. Nope, it doesn't want to zoom right there. there we go. That's what I use a lot of times for my medications when treating uh, rather or fish, whether it be like my betas or mollies, guppies, platies, so on and so on. Um, I usually put them in a hospital tank, the one gallon fish tank, and I'll show you that later on. But that's what I use separately, and I recommend either getting a one gallon tank. Or using like let's say an old ice cream bucket or something to separate the fish when it is sick and to be able to medicate it because some of this medication like this could cause or will cause your water to discolor uh, normally yellow or as well your filter will have the activated charcoal which would cause the medication to just soak up inside the charcoal and be ineffective my aquariums though do not run with the charcoal in there because I pretty much remade my own filters just to um, handle the bio load with the beneficial bacteria that's in it. As I mentioned earlier I talked about the hospital tank. This is my one gallon hospital tank that I use. I actually I believe I bought this at like a garage sale and I found it be something good to hold on to for whatever um, it came with a couple of little things inside and of course you can go to like a Goodwill or Salvation Army or thrift store in your area or garage sale Craigslist so on and find these fairly cheap but the main thing I use inside of mine even though it's got like this bubbler here I don't really need that unless uh, it's in there for quite a long time, but it's not really going to make an effect of it. The air that's in the aqu uh, aquarium that the fish actually breathe come from the movement of the water on top of the, or the air on top of the water like from a filter. So mainly I just use this, the actual plastic container. Let me see if I can pull that out for you. 
So you can see it's just a little small one gallon. I house one fish in here whenever it gets sick. I fill it up about halfway to three quarters of the way, depending on what it is. Now if it's got like um, swim bladder disease and some examples of what it would look like would be a fish is, let's say, floating upside down or it's struggling to actually get to the top of the water or to the bottom of the tank that would be swim bladder disease itself and only fill it up about halfway to allow the fish especially like a betta to be able to come up and uh, breathe because they are uh, they have the labyrinth gills so they breathe at the top of the water whereas like there's a tetra and these guppies don't but um this is my one gallon hospital tank and then over here again, I mean, if this is the medication that I use in it, the directions, I think this is supposed to treat like 10 gallons, yeah, 10 gallons right here. But I just kind of divide it and put what I need inside that small one gallon, depending on how much water I use. Um, if you do decide to use an air bubble, which like I said is not needed, get separate hose. Don't keep the hose, especially if the fish is extremely sick with, let's say, Ick, if it is sick with ick, most likely your aquarium is um, no good and has to be thrown away. When doing the medication for the fish, like for uh, that tetracycline that I showed you, I would follow the recommendations that are on the package, but I would also clean the water out and the number one treatment or cure for a fish of any kind would be constantly fresh water but also make sure you do have a water heater in there as well uh, tropical fish you know around 78 degrees Fahrenheit now if you live let's say in an apartment or something where it's 78 or higher you'll be fine really 76 will be okay too but the warmer the better um, a heater will ensure that it stays at constant temperature and there all are small heaters you can buy that are like 10 watts or so or for um, baitables as well that will keep the water adjusted I would watch it though because with it being a small amount of water the heater can cause the water to overheat too hot and basically cook the fish so when you're doing the medication on the fish I would one make sure you clean the water out roughly or constantly uh, one to two times a day fresh water use water purifier water treatment that is for specifically for aquariums another thing you can do let's say is take a gallon jug that you cleaned out let the water sit for a day because in your tap water you have like I say chlorine and other chemicals inside that are bad for fish so if you don't so happen to have the water treatment especially like stress coat for one I recommend anything from API even though this isn't stress coat or anything this is a uh, for my plants and my aquariums but it is API but I use any pretty much any API products for my aquariums because I trust them and read a lot about them and had no issues at all so constant water changes follow the directions with the medication keep the temperature around 78 degrees and then constantly keep an eye on the temperature itself as well as the fish but definitely do some research online google it um, symptoms of your fish let's say it's floating upside down or it's having problems going to the bottom of the tank or it's lethargic and sitting at the bottom of the tank you know that could be like swim bladder disease for example for treatments for that you know include isolating it in its own aquarium don't put any kind of medication you can use Epsom salt the kind you can buy from Walmart or Walgreens or whatever for a couple of bucks and I usually go about a tablespoon for about a gallon of water it depends I kind of just eye it how I or what I feel comfortable with but um, I go with that and that it is a natural laxative so that kind of helps them block or clean out the blockage in their system betas and I think other tropical fish you can use a boiled pea make sure you remove the skin and then just drop the pea down at the bottom and let them eat that but always clean water for one always clean water
Okay, so now we're gonna make the uh, CO2 canister. One thing that I use is this like this American Clear two liter bottle. Um, it's a good size to do it. It allows it to last a lot longer. I think normally I can get them to last maybe about a month or so total. I usually put about two cups of sugar and around like one teaspoon or so of uh, yeast but I'll go over that too whenever I actually do the mixture so I've already got one pre-made from uh, earlier so I actually won't be doing this step-by-step -step process for that but I will be showing you what I used and a simple way of doing it so like I said for one we start with a two liter bottle I took uh, the plastic wrap off you know just to kind of clean it up a little bit it does sit with my aquarium outside I have another one in here but just a brief description on the co2 canister it's good for aquarium plants so like in this aquarium it might be kind of hard to see I haven't cleaned it yet today this one's actually in my room and it's got some plants inside of here as well and the one outside which will be in the video demonstrating on the maintenance part of the video uh, cleaning out the gravel you'll be able to see the plants and stuff I have in it a lot of the plants are in the background behind my driftwood but I thought you know this would be an also good one to show too and make the video right here by it but co2 is good for plants for their growth not just fertilizer and the light but as well as the co2 and I have seen dramatic results in my other aquarium when I used it and stopped using it and now I'm actually getting back into it so I can uh, have my plants grow back up to how they used to be all right so the, or the bottle just tear off the plastic if you want to you can leave it however you want uh, remove the cap that goes on it you will be poking a hole down inside Let's see if I can get that in the video for you you'll be poking a hole down in the center uh, you would want to go with the diameter of this hose line I'd say about a quarter of an inch I used I believe a knife just to do it because I was kind of lazy at the time I did this or actually originally made it so uh, I just kind of took it punctured through let's see matter of fact I got a knife I'll go ahead and show you that part now because I think I might actually eventually redo this so let's go ahead and poke through it it might be a little too big but it's okay you can also use like a drill bit I'd probably go with a little bit smaller drill bit so let's say if it's a quarter of an inch I'd go just a tad tad bit smaller because you're going to want to make a seal around the cap like this. And I also used hot glue around it on the inside. I don't know if my video is zooming in on that. On the outside and the inside to keep it airtight. You can use silicon. I would get aquarium safe stuff. There is silicon out there you can buy like at a home depot or a lowe's or an ace or wherever you can purchase it at it's got to be pure 100 percent silicon no additives nothing for um like anti-fungal or anything like that any chemicals in it can and possibly will kill the fish so that's why i use my hot glue it's something i had on hand already and then i read the line or ran the line to another cap which goes into a small drinking bottle and all the stuff that I have that I'm showing you I purchased at Walmart I mean for this it was like uh, 99 cents or something like that for a two liter I drink the water but if you just happen to have you know root beer coke whatever lying around use that too but I use this due to the fact that it is water with a few added sweeteners in there nothing major um, and of course this is just water this will be set up so let me show you 
All right, the first hole you were to drill through your cap will connect to your two liter. Now the two liter is gonna be the actual housing for the sugar, the water, and the yeast. And then you're gonna plug it or have the line going through, which this is one line that goes all the way through, through this cap that I drilled holes through, two holes. I'll get to that hole in a minute. And coming out the other side, so I'll take it. You'll fill this bottle up, you know, about halfway or so with water. And this is going to be like a filter because of the um, alcohol or anything that seeps through the line. It won't go straight into your aquarium, but it'll go inside this bottle. And the gases will rise above the water. And then eventually we'll make it through. So you're going to want to drill the second hole, have a small line. This is that uh, check valve that I shown you that was at Walmart, comes in a pack of two. It will allow the air to go through this way, but any water that just so happens to go back due to like a vacuum or something will not seep back into here. Overflowing this or overflowing the alcohol and everything, or the alcohol yeast bottle, the CO2 processor generator, there you go, uh, and cause a mess all over the floor. Um, so this will be the line that goes through to your aquarium. Now what I did is I took a couple of feet or about a foot or two feet of uh, this line. I took a small air bubble stone. I don't currently have one here. Oh yes I do. So it's got it on connected on another hose but you know a little air stone like this really don't have to use one but it'll help distribute the CO2 into the aquarium and it, it's not going to bubble a lot like you have an air bubble or yeah, an air bubble or a pump connected to it but if you were to take the air hose and after I'll say about 30 minutes to an hour or so and have it sitting in the water at the high level of the water don't go too low because you'll cause the pressure to build up and it'll be too much and basically you'll just sit there with a CO2 build up and it's not going into the aquarium but escaping elsewhere if it's not airtight like it should be but if you had this you'll see little bubbles forming and then popping up at the top or this you'll see a couple little bubbles coming out so don't be alarmed if it's not like a whole lot like an actual pump system connected to it so once you run the line and everything then you'll have uh, all of this connected and I will go over a video on mixing up the yeast water and sugar separately so your setup is like this all right your co2 canister generator line going out into your filter bottle it's going to be about halfway with water and with the line going all the way through below the water line and then your air is going or your co2 is going to build up at the top and it's going to escape at the top right here which is why on this cap you're going to want to have this tube connected to as high as possible in there but also make sure you can put seal uh, some kind of seal around it to seal it up to keep the gases from escaping and then you're going to have your check valve make sure the arrow is pointing out this way this is where the line connects to your aquarium to make the yeast and uh, sugar water mixture I usually just scrap out like a coffee cup or a measuring cup I'll throw a little bit of water in there and right now I don't have hot water I got it turned off so I'm going to nuke it alright next after heating the water in the microwave for about 10 seconds but you can also use just a tap water as hot as it gets you don't want to go too hot because you will kill off the the um yeast so i add a little bit of sugar a little bit more say about a teaspoon or so then we'll mix the water make sure it's dissolved See if I can get better lighting.
Next, we are going to want to add these, so I think I'm going to go with two tablespoons right here of yeast. Actually, no, let's go with two teaspoons in it. Alright, I'm going to put the phone down so I can do this. So I added the yeast, now stir it in, make sure you get it in there. And I'm going to bring it back over to my sink really fast and rinse it off and add a little bit more water. The yeast that I buy, as you can see, you can go to Walmart and get that as well. Uh, it's, it's this three pack of yeast, the other one I just used in the yeast mixture and I'm going to let it sit here for now and um, start its activation process. It usually takes around 10 to 15 minutes. And what you'll notice on the sides, it'll start bubbling over. And whenever that happens, we are ready to pour it into our sugar and water mixture that will be in the two liter, which I will go over with. But this yeast, also on the package, they do tell you how to activate the yeast and I recommend activating it before you pour it into the actual sugar and water mixture in the two liter but like i said i nuked my water for about 10 seconds it's not very deep there's not a lot i mixed a little bit of sugar to help feed the yeast and activate it and the warm water helps to activate the yeast as well sorry my camera keeps going out of focus i'm using my phone and you probably hear my birds in the background as well currently in my room all right so, I'm going to let this sit here and activate. Oh, looks like it's going. As you can see, hopefully you can see. There we go. It's starting to bubble over. That is the E starting to activate. So, I'm going to let it sit for 10 minutes. While I'm waiting, I'm going to go ahead and grab the 2 liter bottle. I'm going to go ahead and fill it up with water. You're going to want to add two cups of sugar roughly and what I'll do is I'll come back on the video and show you after I have filled it up with water. I'll be right back. So it's only been about two or three minutes since I've activated the yeast but I went ahead and decided to make the water sugar mixture. Sorry I'm trying to get into Good light, and sorry for the mess on the carpet. Today's my cleaning day, so I thought I'd go ahead and make the video first. Alright, so what I did is I went into my kitchen, went to my faucet, filled it up about two-thirds or a little less than two-thirds away with water. This is just regular faucet water. Warm water is good. It'll help dissolve the sugar faster, but I keep my hot water heater off during the day save on electricity plus we don't ever really use hot water during the day i went in and added two cups of sugar though it may not look like it I actually added about two and a half cups of sugar just because i felt like adding a little bit more in there so what i'm going to do now is i need to shake it up really well so there really is no method to shaking it up whatever just grab it start shaking it make sure the lid's on tight Probably gonna take a lot of mixing since my water isn't warm or anything. Sugar won't dissolve in this all that well. It will come out frothy in color. I'm gonna show you, and of course, for some of you who don't know or do know, the byproduct of sugar, water, and yeast is alcohol. So I'm gonna put my phone down that I'm using right now to record. I'm gonna go grab a bottle that I've had for quite a while.
Okay. So, this was one I had that I used for like over a month. And this thing's probably actually like now a year old. So, what I'll show you what it looks like. So, byproduct, of course, of sugar water yeast is alcohol. Okay. So, yeah, you can drink this. I've tried it. I mean, it does have alcohol taste. It's kind of like wine without the grape flavoring, I guess. Uh, I don't really drink alcohol too much. So, I'm not sure how to explain it, but it's perfectly safe. A hair at the top. That's going to be yeast that was dried up on the the top of this bottle it's probably going to be on the cap also so i usually clean mine off and on the bottom you will see yeast build up as or the dead yeast that's in there and it looks like my mixture mixed up really well so let me see if i can show you what it looks like from the side you know it's transparent transparent and it'll eventually turn a little darker with the yeast and stuff inside. So this mixture that I just made is now ready for the yeast. And it is a little low compared to that one with water because of the water inside the cup. Plus I like to rinse my cup out with more water to make sure I dissolve or, get, or take out all the uh, yeast that's inside. It looks like this is actually ready. So if you see it looks like it's bubbling over right here I don't know how well you can see it from the side or kind of like if you take an A&W root beer which I just so happen to have and uh, and it, it creates that froth when you pour it that's what it'll look like when it's ready so all we got to do now is just pour them both together shake it up which I'll show you and then uh, we'll set it up on the aquarium I'll be right back once I get the other camera and stuff set up for that Okay, so now it's time to pour the yeast into the sugar water mixture that we prepared earlier. Um, I'm in my room again, so it might be a little difficult. One reason why I'm doing a lot of this in my room is the fact that I've got family here, and they go in and out of the kitchen a lot. So I'm trying to keep it to where we're not disturbed in the video. So I grab my funnel. Let me see if you can actually see it. Yeah. All right, so grab my funnel. I went ahead and poured me a cup to kind of rinse out the coffee mug that has the yeast in it. We'll now take it. Pour it all out. Hold it upside down, let it drain. You are gonna use that water that I poured in another cup to rinse your cup out or this coffee mug out because you want all the yeast in your mixture. I'm trying to keep it from dripping everywhere. Alright. And you can smell it too. It smells like like cooked or baking dough, bread rolls and raw dough. And you can see the bottles getting filled up there pretty quickly I probably won't be able to get all the yeast that's in here maybe I can swirl it around and you probably might hear maintenance workers outside with uh, blowers and trimmers and stuff out there I live in an apartment complex once my wife is here I'll be able to have her roll the video for better quality and uh, have my own place and a better workstation. So I'm going to go ahead and empty that out. Tap it out. Where it's at now is perfectly fine. Put your regular cap back on it, and I do recommend saving these caps for when you're done, especially like if you just so happen to want to drink a little alcohol or whatever instead of going out and buying it because it is a lot cheaper to make it like this than it is to go out and buy it you can use grape juice too which I've got a bunch of bottles I got white grapes and uh, red grapes that I made wine out of and it's strong it's good but take it 
We'll mix it up. I don't have to do too much to it. Don't check it's tight. Spin it around. Other than that, we are pretty much done. It is now ready to be put into uh, or connected to the aquarium. Now, I will show you how I have that set up, especially I'm going to be using the same aquarium for the maintenance, the cleaning process on the gravel for this video. So I'll go ahead and set it up and everything and just show you how I have it set up and where I have it sitting at. Uh, I'll probably remove my air stone. That way I can just let the airs escape because the stone's kind of old and has been sitting in there for a while. So once again, here is the mixture. And it's ready to go. And of course it is cloudy now, but once all the sugar and stuff is ate up and the yeast settles down to the bottom, it'll be clear just like I showed you a little while ago with that container that's old. Alright. Okay, so I decided to use the aquarium in my bedroom for several reasons. One uh, it does have, I don't know how well you can see it, but some algae buildup, the green spots and stuff here, as well as on the front of the glass. It does have the plants in it. Since I went over the CO2 uh, generator, I can kind of explain in here. I mean, I've already shown you how to make it. Basically, you just have to have the airline going into the aquarium. So... Uh, I'm able to use my aquarium in my room too to show you about this algae and I'll explain more about that later plus it is I don't know well you can see it there's a uh, fish waste and snow waste in here so it's dirtier than my other aquarium this one I got for free with everything in it except her which is my betta and then my mollies that are sitting up here I got those from my other aquariums but I got four cardinal tetras two Chinese algae eaters and the plants and everything you see in here here's the top it's dirty like I said it's been a little while since I cleaned it see the plants down inside it's normally brighter than this but I've turned off one of the lights I don't know if you can see it it's supposed to hold two T5 24 inch bulbs but with it being summer here in Phoenix we use up a lot of electricity, so I cut back because I've got this aquarium. This aquarium, which is a 25 gallon. This one's a 20. The other one in my living room that I was going to show and demonstrate with is a 38 gallon. And it's pretty full of plants and mollies and some tetras. And then I've got a 20 gallon hex that's also in my living room. So I've got four aquariums, 20 gallons and larger here and I've actually got this that houses my hamster I have too many aquariums I've got a couple sitting in my closet that you're gonna see you're gonna hear my birds aquarium there's another hex aquarium there's another hex aquarium I've got a 10 gallon outside uh, that was just like the one in the closet so yeah I've got a lot of aquariums been doing this for several years my point is uh, I've learned a lot over the years I've been doing this so here we go with the cleaning first I get two five gallon buckets I usually use three but this aquarium I'm going to use just the two so one will be the uh, the bucket that you use to take the water out of the aquarium and then the other one I've already filled with clean water um, I use like I mentioned before about stress coat API stress coat I use it a lot for every water change anything that removes or uh, removes the chlorine and chloramines and detoxifies the metals things like that is what you need so I mean there's different kinds of brands some you can buy from Walmart and then I also use this funnel there's one that came with this aquarium. I have one that's got a little pump on it, but I like to use this one because it siphons better. Plus, it's small for this tank. So, I will get to the process and show you how to do this, and I will talk about it. 
Okay. So, one thing I will mention, have your aquariums at high, especially when siphoning the water. You can also use like a power head and make your own uh, water evacuation. That way, I guess you can say to where you have one draining the water and then it goes into your bucket and then you drain it back into your tank. I mean, you need to change the water anyways. A recommendation will depend on how much or what your biolute is, how many fish and stuff you hide and have inside of it, how large your aquarium is. Plants will also make a difference. So you can go to aqadvisor.com, I believe is a website, and you're able to kind of do a stocking. You're able to put in information on the size of the aquarium you have, the filter, and then the kind of fish you want to put into it, and it'll give you a rough idea on if you're overloading the filter and stuff or if you have adequate filtration but so you stick it down to the or stick the funnel down to the water and I'm gonna go ahead and siphon this out and explain more have it up high with the bucket lower than the aquarium itself to allow the vacuum for the water to go through one thing what I do when cleaning I don't know how well you can see that. You should be able to see it. I just lightly tap the bottom. When you do this, you don't want to do all of the bottom because there's what's called beneficial bacteria. It basically it's on everything inside of here. It's on the wall of this glass. It's on these plants. It's on those rocks. It's in your gravel. And they usually go about an inch below the gravel itself. And if you look up the nitrogen cycle for aquariums, you'll be able to understand more about the beneficial bacteria in there which I advise you do cycling for an aquarium takes about a month usually six weeks sometimes a little quicker sometimes a little longer so a lot of these pet shops like to tell you you can basically take the water throw the water in an aquarium and throw fish in there and that's wrong a, a uh, example that I would give on that would be it's like you going into a garage with a running car with the windows closed you can survive in there for a few minutes, but after a few minutes, you're going to have all the gas and stuff build up inside. Whereas if you have a window with a suction fan, you're able to stay into that garage with the car running and it allows the ventilation. And that's what this cycle does. You can also find a lot of videos on YouTube and things like that for cycling, uh, maintenance, things like that. Everything that I've gone over already. But here I'm just kind of patting down, not super hard because of these plants here, but just patting down, remove all this dirt, you can see it's coming up, let me get a little closer. Alright, let me find a spot that's dirty. So yeah, that's fish waste and everything that seeps to the bottom and that's bad that, the, that uh, builds up the ammonia and everything inside and will kill a fish the recommended uh, cleaning would be once a week I'd say about 25% of your aquarium water sorry the have my camera on a bed on a tripod the tripod doesn't want to stay balanced um once a week 25 percent of water always use this water clarifier stuff and do each section you know if you want to do you do it once a week go quarter of the tank quarter of the tank quarter of the tank quarter of the tank when you're vacuuming the bottom get up all the loose food and stuff like that Normally you would shut the filters off, but I know how much water it's going to take out, so I'm fine with it. But when you do that and you, let's say you leave the filter running for too long, um, it will of course stop whenever the water level gets too low in the aquarium. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to prime the filter, basically just lift the lid and pull water inside 
or if you're going to burn your pump up to start it back up again if it doesn't run. And I'm getting close to filling up this tank, I mean this bucket, it matches the filling water. My filter is also getting low, so it's probably about to shut off. Alright, we'll call it good. And then I rush the water to my bathroom and pour it out in my uh, bathtub. With this old water, you can use it for plants and stuff like that. It is good for plants. It's like a fertilizer for them. So if you have like a little garden or something, you can use that and water your plants outside. I do that sometimes with my jalapenos and everything. So now it's time to fill it back up. So I got my five gallon bucket here with water. I use this API stress coat on it. I used uh, an eyedropper and it holds uh, two and a half milliliters or a half a teaspoon and it's like let's see what was it it's uh five milliliters I believe or a cap full for like every 10 gallons you can put more than a recommendation it's good for the fish I always do all right pour it in try to go slowly it might be a little hard because there's the water in the bucket spilling everywhere and you're gonna see fish waste and stuff in there pick up which is fine let your filter pick that up Water level is actually about where I want it. And you can see all the debris floating around in the aquarium, which is fine. Uh, that filter will pick it up, so that's actually a good thing. Here's what I was talking about. You want to prime it so the waterfall or water flows through quickly. I have a three-stage filter. I have activated carbon in this one, which came with the tank when I got it. So I left everything pretty much as it is to not ruin the uh, nitrogen cycle in the aquarium and upset or stress out any of the fish that came with the tank. Mollies are pretty hardy fish just like goldfish but you cannot keep them together they are actually from different climates they're tropical fish here and goldfish are um, not tropical they're cold weather so really wouldn't get along too well. The water conditions would be too bad for them. Mollies are also brackish water fish, so you know, part salt, a little bit of salt and water, but they grow or do fine in uh, fresh water. Other than that, I'm ready to dump my bucket out. You can see right in the center some of the fish waste. The water is actually more murky outside of the video. After a while, this uh, fish waste will settle down to the bottom again, and it'll be clear. The algae, that's one thing I wanted to mention. If you do have algae, don't worry about it too much. I mean, if it's something that you want to get rid of, you can buy a scrubber for them or use a regular sponge that has not been used for anything. No chemicals or anything like that. You just bought from the store. I'd rinse it off and use it in here. Or you can go out and buy some Chinese algae eaters, which these guys are actually eating the fish food. There's snails, all those little white dots are snails, but they're not doing too good of a job. Um, my other aquariums have no algae. One way to, to prevent the algae or to uh, reduce it is the amount of um, nutrients that goes into the water. So remove any old fish food after a few minutes of feeding turn the light off so I usually keep my lights on 10 hours a day 
12 hours a day because of my plants you can reduce that really if you don't have plants in your aquarium you don't need light I mean it's good for the fish but they're not gonna die without it so you can shut it off for a while to reduce algae buildup and everything in there As a matter of fact I have a little bit of this stuff left for the plants I also make my own I order online the mixture for it it saves me a lot of money it's kind of expensive to buy the bag but in the long run it's a whole lot cheaper so other than that that would be your basic aquarium maintenance for the cleaning the gravel which would be the biggest thing the filter I would clean and check usually once a month but I, I don't do anything to it unless it stops flowing because there's no reason to disturb it while it's going so even if you get a box or a filter that recommends you change it um what was it like every few months or something like that i think the boxes on the cartridges say i don't ever worry about that i just go by eye and what i feel needs to be done to it other than that you'll be fine and even with these guys i have fake plants in here i bought at the dollar store and like goodwill i got some uh Platties, some green lantern platies, sunburst, some black neon tetra. There's a neon tetra. There's my male beta. I was gonna breed him and the female I got, but I changed my mind. And you can see there's a little bit of algae buildup, but it's not too bad. The diatoms over there on that side, the brown, I can reduce that. I also have my lights set on timers too. Alright, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'd like to thank you for watching. If you have any questions pertaining to aquarium maintenance, maintenance um, questions on what to buy, where to shop for things like that, as well as fish, uh, fish diseases and stuff, if you got something wrong with your fish, please feel free to ask me. I can provide websites for forums and stuff to go to as well. I don't know too much about marine fish. The cleaning would be basically the same for the maintenance on the gravel and the sand cleaning. I do have one freshwater aquarium with sand, but as for sickness, I'm not too familiar with, but can try to help and uh, answer the questions on that as well. So feel free to message me at any time. Let me know. Other than that, like I said, I hope you enjoy and thank you for coming.